Well, holiday travel chaos will be front and centre next week on Parliament Hill. MPs on the Transport Committee are expected to call witnesses to an emergency meeting to explain why hundreds of Canadians were left stranded by Sunwing. But we want to begin with another travel issue that's coming to a boil. Starting today, all visitors from China must provide a negative COVID test. And just in the last few hours, the airlines have come out against the move. A statement from the National Airlines Council of Canada says research has found that Canada's pre-departure testing pandemic policies were largely ineffective in identifying COVID-19 cases and preventing the spread of the virus and should no longer be imposed. Transport Minister Omar Algabra is in charge of that policy and he joins me now from Mississauga, Ontario. Welcome back to the program, Minister. Uh, I want to say Happy New Year. I don't know <laughs> how happy a start to your year this is, though. Well, first of all, Happy New Year to you, Catherine. I know, though, however, to your point, there are many, many passengers who did not start off or end last year and start off this year on a good note. So let's start with China, since that is uh, the, the newest news that we have right now. What is your response to that concern that I just read part of by the airlines? Look, um, you know, throughout the pandemic, um, our government has done whatever we can to protect the health and safety of Canadians. And at a time of lack of information coming out of China about their COVID situation, at a time where our own public health system in Canada is under a lot of pressure, it is the prudent thing to do to ask travelers who are, have been in China over the last 10 days to get tested prior to departing uh, China, Hong Kong, or Macau uh, on their way to Canada. Okay, so I want to pick up on something you said there. You talked about the lack of information, which is also something the World Health Organization has talked about. It said it understands why countries like Canada are doing this kind of pre-departure testing. Because you don't have enough information or countries don't have enough information, they're trying to avoid risk. Should that be the message to Canadians that this isn't really about, say, meaningfully preventing the spread of COVID? It's about trying to get a handle on what's happening in China? Uh, it is about preventing the spread of COVID, including some unknown potential, unknown variant. Uh, but, but, but it's so limited me... effectiveness, is it not, sir? I mean, like 48 hours before departure. It's it's not it's not. Of course, there'll always be some people say you you know there's some loophole in this or some loophole in that. But let me point you to a study that was done last year by the University of British Columbia that found border measures, travel health and public health measures actually reduced the pressure on our public health system, delayed the arrival of, of various COVIDs, gave government and the public room to, to be prepared. So Can those you... measures work and there, there'll always be some people who say, well, well it's not perfect. Okay, but, but it's it more... does add a layer of protection. P pardon me, that Minister, I don't mean to interrupt, but it's more than some people. I mean, can you point me to a single expert right now who says this is going to make a big difference? This is a, this is an, a necessary health measure? I, I, I've heard a lot of uh, doctors weigh in, and I haven't heard one say, yeah, th this is going to be a real game changer. This is going to do anything more than, than delay by a couple of days, really, uh, any new variant or anything like that. First of all, you named one yourself, the World Health Organization. But, sir, that's uh, not what they're that saying. This is an understandable measure. Second, uh, I pointed to a research done last year by the University of British Columbia that said this helped. Third, it's a layer of protection. It's not, a, it's not the be all and end all, but it is a layer of protection given the situation that we're in, given the lack of information that is not available. Uh, this is the prudent thing to do right now. Okay, uh, I do want to turn to, I mean, I, I think we all understand where you stand on the issue. I do want to turn to Sunwing because, of course, that's something that affects a lot of Canadians. I know that you spoke to uh, the head of Sunwing Airlines today. They put out this new statement saying they are, quote, incredibly sorry. Are you satisfied? Uh, I was very frustrated. I still am very frustrated, uh, Catherine, by what had happened. Um, and my job is to make sure that the system that we have in place uh, protects the rights of Canadians and that the Canadian Transportation Agency is able to enforce the rules. So, um, um, look, we learned a lot from last summer. Uh, I'm glad to see that much of the troubles that took place last summer did not occur this time. I was, however, very disheartened to see what had happened with Sunwing passengers. Um, I 
uh, you know, noted uh, 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 sincerity in uh, the CEO's voice when he offered uh, their full apology. However, I want to make sure that not only Sunwing and other airlines have their proper plans, but I want to make sure that our system has learned from these lessons and is able to improve and adjust based on those lessons to protect uh, the rights of our passengers. What do you think the appropriate consequences are, Minister? I've heard you say everything is on the table, but that really leads, leaves it wide open. Uh, significant fines, for instance, is that an appropriate consequence? T tens so of thousands CTA, of dollars per passenger, yeah. The Canadian Transportation Agency, the CTA, has uh, the delegated authority to choose to conduct an overall investigation. They'll obviously look at any complaints that they receive, and they have the delegated authority to it, they choose to in, conduct an investigation. For me, I want to make sure that the system uh, is solid and rigorous. And what we are looking at right now is any additional tools and, and improvements that we can do to the system to ensure that airlines are much more prepared and have their passengers' rights at the center of their operation. Would imposing fines of $25,000 per passenger, which is allowed, do what you're talking about? Would it ensure a rigorous system, significant fines, in your view? I realize you're not the one who decides whether or not to impose them, but I'd like to know if you support that move. I, again, the CTA has the authority to impose fines and to conduct investigations. And if they choose to, I certainly will support them in doing their job. Uh, what I am saying is moving forward, um, I am looking at additional tools that we can provide the CTA to ensure that passengers' rights are upheld. Okay. Um, one of the other questions that, that it remains around all of this uh, is whether or not you're going to appear at committee. I'm sure, sir, you've seen opposition parties clamoring for you to come before the transport committee and answer questions about, um, as the conservatives describe it, how you allowed this to happen. Are you prepared to answer those kinds of questions? I am always pleased to answer a call by my colleagues, parliamentarians, uh, colleagues at transport committee. I was just there December 5th. Uh, where we also talked about uh, uh, the air transportation sector. Uh, if they invite me, I'd be more than happy to do so. And just let me remind your viewers, it's our actually Liberal members who uh, called for this emergency meeting. So I'd be happy if they invited me to attend. Do you accept the level of accountability that the opposition parties are leveling at you in all of this? I would be happy to answer their questions. I, let me just pause here for a second. You know, for a conservative party who always ask government to get out of the way and let the private sector uh, do their own operation, for them now to say that government is responsible for the operation of the private sector, I find it a bit rich. However, our government is committed to upholding passenger rights and ensuring that the airline sector uh, fulfills its obligations to its customers. I just wonder, like, I think about what happened in the United States with Southwest Airlines and Pete Buttigieg got on the phone while the whole scandal was going on with the CEO of Southwest. Uh, he has insisted that everybody should be refunded within the week, which U.S. law allows for. Um, you know, you've said this is unacceptable. Why aren't we seeing, I guess, an equivalent uh, level of demand from you in response to all of this? Oh, let me assure you, uh, first of all, that Transport Canada and my office uh, have been in regular contact with uh, Sunwing throughout this ordeal. Uh, second, the U.S. system is different than ours. The U.S. does not have a Canadian transportation quasi-judicial uh, body that adjudicates and holds investigation. In, in the U.S., it is the Department of Transportation that does that job. Therefore, my colleague, Secretary Buttigieg, obviously has an added role there, but I could tell you that Secretary Buttigieg has been calling me over the last uh, few months to, sh uh, to ask about our ideas from what we have done in Canada about our passenger bill of rights. So I've, I've been very happy to share with him some of the lessons learned and some of the work that we've been doing. Okay, uh, I do want to ask you about one more story before we let you go. It's a story our colleague Ashley Burke has just broken. Uh, a member of your own party, Liberal MP Ali Asasi, wants the government to place travel restrictions on Iran's representative to ICAO. That is, of course, as you know, sir, uh, the UN Aviation Agency based in Montreal. The man in question is accused of having ties to the Quds Force, which is a terrorist organization. Now, he has denied the allegations to CBC News. This is something you would have, of course, heard about before because families of the victims of flight PS752 have called for this. Now you have a member of your own party, MP Ali Asasi, calling for this. Are you prepared? to act. 
Uh, look, I personally and our government are very serious about holding Iran accountable for what happened with PS752 and how many Canadians and their families were killed on it. Uh, we will continue to pursue uh, justice and accountability there. Uh, as uh, you know, you may heard, uh, you may have heard that our government is pursuing the International Court of Justice uh, to to hold uh, uh, Iran accountable for what had happened. We will continue to utilize all tools available to us to ensure that justice is upheld. But this individual, sir, is that something that you would entertain? Travel restrictions, removal from the body. Let me, you know, uh, Catherine, there's a lot of work being done, and I'm not going to preempt an answer to a question uh, where we're looking at all tools that we have at our disposal. So uh, I'm not able to... With regards to this individual, to that you're looking at all tools with regards to this individual? To all individuals who are connected to the regime, we put in place the strictest regime that holds members of the regime accountable uh, in the world, and we will continue to look at ways to implement, enforce, and expand this. So uh, this is something that we take extremely seriously, and we are, I'll work with my colleagues and others and the families on making sure that we do what we can to hold Iran accountable. Okay, we appreciate you being generous with your time today. Thank you very much, Minister. Thanks, Catherine.